So for all you guys who have big fancy garages, here's my little workshop or part of it. And here's the carby in progress. Now I've put one, as you can see it there, put one back in place. That one was actually stuck shut when I first pulled them apart. So it wasn't getting any fuel at all. That one around there still got a bit of green. Now that's been through the, a couple of times through the Sonic Cleaner. There's still a bit of green around it, which I'll brush off. I've got some brushes to brush that off with. But everything else is pretty clean. There's the parts there. Now, what am I waiting for? Well, I've got to replace those sons of guns and I just noticed that that's got green on it that I'll have to clean off. They can probably go through the sonic cleaner again, those things, or I might even get a couple of new ones. But I've got another carby on the way, which I'll hopefully be able to put on the bike and do this one up. But they do come up nice and clean in the Sonic Clean, and that's the old one that's very dirty. But as you can see, it's a work in progress. So, the seafoam kind of worked. It's a Carby Spray Cleaner, brand new can, and a mostly empty can. The spanner for the um, seat is a number 10. I see the motorbike mostly uses number 10 and number 12s. That there is just to weigh that down so it doesn't go floating around. And then I'll close my workshop up because I'm waiting on I'm waiting on some some Loctite gasket goo because as you can see that doesn't quite fit. I mean not without stretching it. Now look at that, see now there's the other sides, there's, there's the other sides come out. So I need a bit of gasket goo to, ah, oh, that's nearly impossible to do. So I'm getting some Loctite, Loctite blue gasket sealant. It's not actually a, a new gasket, it's just to seal that. It did have it on it, I noticed, when I took it apart to clean it. And over that one there, you can still see there's bits of gasket goo left on there even after the Sonic clean, but they scratch off, so that's why right. it's just a, it's a flexible stuff. Very good. Okay, let's see how this works. Now, here's how you put a diaphragm onto a cylinder piston. Put a little bit of that's plain old hand wash, liquid soap. Now, you're probably aware that this stuff is very slippery. There's plenty of it around there. Now, this goes down through there, right? And we've got to get that, that little tab there. That's got to line up with that little groove just there. It's very hard to see where this thing is. But there we go. Now we just pull that up over the edge there. And you might be wondering what the Oyster card is for. Well, now that that's pretty much lined up there, the Oyster card is used to put that down in there. And that just nips down in there. You could use the flat of a knife blade if you can get more of a hold on it, but I decided to use the Oyster card because it's pretty much the same material and it's less likely to cut the rubber. Now, I don't know if you can see that, let's... It's slipping in there nicely. You 
you can feel it going into place when it does go. Be careful not to pinch it. That's a, that's a bit of rubber either side of the card. See that? That, that slipped in there nicely then. And what it does do, of course, it bulges out. But that's all right. Because we'll straighten that in a moment. Now you can see that that's quite a bulge there. So what we've got to do is work this around now. Now that's really slippery, so you shouldn't have a, a problem with that. Keep forcing that in there. Move that around there a little bit. Get some of that. Now that last little bit there. Quite tight there. Eh? Okay, I'm gonna Now, we're going to go back that way a lot. Now, there's the, there's the flat just there. And I've got to get that around that way just a little bit. Reveal the there we go. Here's the other hand, it's not quite so slippery. Gotta be able to look down through that little hole and have it have it line up nicely with the because it's not quite dead centre, you see. The hole is slightly offset. Nearly there. And you've got to pull that without pulling it back off because Getting that on again. It's just as likely to pull it out of that little 
groove that's in or tear the rubber and I don't want to do that they're too bloody expensive just make sure that's nicely tucked into there There we go, perfect. Now yeah, just sneeze that a little bit. I want that with no pinches in it. There we go, perfect. lined up perfectly nice around there and it appears to me to be sitting nicely around there just press it in with my thumb a little bit that liquid soap's the word I, I thought of using RP7 oil I got it off with RP7 soak it overnight the old one with RP7 and it just slips right off easy as but um, I don't know, you can use RP7 to put it back on, just make sure that hasn't moved. Perfect. There we go, job done. Look at that. Perfect little sucker. Well, thanks to... Let's turn that around, if you can. There's a bit of a crimp there that I'll straighten out in a moment, but that's sitting down nicely in the groove there. A little bit of a bulge there, but that's not too bad. Let me have a look at that. There we go, perfect. Okay, very good. Well, there's the old exhaust pipe in a million bits. That didn't so much as come off as fall off. It's some pieces, I'll hang on to that because that might Here's a couple of old gaskets, the headers, they're just absolutely stuck. Yeah, I don't know what's been going on there. That's rotted out. Inside of there is probably rotted out. That I had to chisel the bolts off. And it all comes from under there, of course. And ready for the new Delcovic stainless steel pipes to be put in. Lovely stuff.